everybody, it's Joe from Greenlight Sound and GreenlightSound.com, and today we've got a video comparing two very similar plugins, two versions of the same plugin, actually. I've got on the left here Pro Q2 from Fab Filter and the newly released Pro Q3, and today I'd like to cover the difference between the two. So if you already have Pro Q2, you can see what the difference is, and if, well, it's, if it's worth the upgrade for you. If you don't have either of these plugins, whether this plugin is Pro Q3 is right for you, which... If you're looking for a digital EQ, you can't do much better, so I highly recommend it. But here's the main differences. First of all, right at the bat, you can see the two look a little bit different. Pro Q3 is a little bit darker background here. One of the things that's really cool that was a feature of Pro Q2 was the spectrum grab feature, where if you hovered the arrow down uh, in the analyzer, it would turn purple and you could grab any of these peaks and move them as you want. So in Pro Q2, here's how it worked. And I could grab and adjust as needed. So it works in a very similar way in Pro Q3, but it'll actually show me some frequencies that I can grab. So let me show you exactly how that works. So let's say, for example, that one mid frequency or mid low frequency was bothering me. I could just grab it. I know exactly what the frequency is, and I can pull it down from there and eliminate it. One of the other things is when I do create a band, which is very easy to do in both of these. I just kind of click here. In Pro Q2, I had the actual frequency, the gain, the Q, the solo each band, that's all there. But that's it. If I wanted to change any other things like the shape, the bell, low shelf, high, low cut, high shelf, high cut, so on, or the, um, the slope, I had to do it down here in this control, which was not too bad. You had to drag down here a little bit to get to that. In Pro Q3, more controls are featured in here. I can change the, the shelving versus bell versus notch versus tilt and all the other different filter types I have, all within this menu right here. And I also have a little drop down menu, which I didn't have before. In that little drop down menu, I can disable the band, invert the gain, make it dynamic, which we'll get to in a minute. minute. Uh, shape also is within here. The slopes down there. And you can change the stereo placement, left, right, stereo, mid, or side, split the band, delete all that within this little area. So if you're working right here, you just created your um, EQ point, you can access the main controls that you would need here. You can also go down here and do it as well, but it's also easier to get to from within this band. So that's a big help, I think, in Pro Q3 versus Pro Q2. One of the other main differences is this EQ is now a dynamic EQ as well. And if you don't know what that means, it simply means that instead of being a static EQ where I'm pulling out 3.63 dB at 171.6 hertz all the time, it's only happening when the signal exceeds a certain threshold. By default, the attack release threshold fab filter kind of sets up on their own, but you can also go in and change it yourself. And the way we get to it is by this little ring around the gain band. So if I pull down to the left, I have compression in that band. So whenever a signal exceeds a certain threshold in there, I get basically what's like compression. Or if I move that slider to the right, I get upwards expansion. And I control how much gain is there with this ring, or you can see these little double arrows here. I can also do it there. Controls the same thing if I want to work within the interface rather than at this knob down here. This, I can disable the dynamic um, EQ. I can turn it on or off to see what the difference is in the effects I've applied. And I can get rid of this auto here and control the threshold with that slider. And all the other bands still work as well. One of the other cool features here that you didn't have in this one, uh, for example, I'll create a high shelf on both, is that when I can work left, right, stereo, I could go mid-side. In this one, I have a lot more options. I can do left, right side, stereo, mid-side, all within each band separately. Meaning I could have, pull out some here in the mid-band, push up the sides here, choose a little push up here, which is the full stereo signal. I could control each band being left, right, mid, side, full stereo. 
that's different than in the old FabFilter Pro-Q2 where I couldn't do it per band. It was just um, per instance of Pro-Q2. That's very cool. And if you work in surround, Pro-Q3 also has uh, support for up to 7.2, I think, surround sound. I don't really work in surround, so I can't comment much on that. But if you're in post-production and do that a lot, it seems like it'd be fantastic for that. Another thing we have that's in Pro-Q2, if I double click here, I can create a um, high pass filter. When I do that, I have a new slope option. In Pro-Q2, when I created that filter, my slope maximum was 96 dB per octave, which is pretty darn steep as it is. But in this one, I can actually move it all the way down to a brick wall filter straight up and down and really dial in where I want it to stop. You can listen to how I play with that. Let me disable this one. And it doesn't have a lot of the artifacts. It's such a steep slope you would imagine having, but it sounds pretty clean, pretty natural, and it works in zero latency mode or natural phase and linear phase mode, which you can choose down here. Uh, I can still choose all my different EQ nodes at once and move them around as I want. I can get rid of them all. Go back to our flat spectrum here. I'll do the same over here. I'll get rid of all these. You do have a new uh, EQ type in here. I'll put a notch right in the middle or an EQ in the middle here. And this is a new flat tilt filter. Uh, and initially in the old Pro-Q2, you had a tilt shelf, which looks kind of like this, where you had some slope right in the middle. But in this one, we have the flat tilt filter, which is a straight EQ line up and down. And it actually works really well for some natural balancing out. If you want to make something brighter or warmer, I'll show you how it works. You can control some really easy basic balance by sliding this left and right for what frequency you want it to be on and then moving it up and down to warm or brighten your sound up. Really cool to have that option. Another difference I'm actually going to show you on another track here because the analyzer that you have can actually show collisions now, which is really helpful. So I'm going to go to over to a couple of guitar tracks here, solo them up. There are two different guitar tracks, one pan left and one pan right. Open these two up, bring them next to each other. Here they are. Let me get to a different part of the song. So because those two parts are so similar, it's basically the same part played twice and one pan left and right, there can be a lot of clashing between those two. And when collapsed down to mono, they can really have some frequency cancellation or just not sound like two different guitars. So one of the cool things you can do with the analyzer now is instead of having pre, post, and side chain only, or pre, post, and side chain only over here, I can choose to see other instances of Pro-Q3 on one single analyzer. Here's what I mean, I'll play. So these two instances are now communicating with each other. So I can see with the white outline, the original track that it is on and the red outline, the track that I chose it to communicate with, in this case, the other guitar track. And they actually have the same exact names. You can name them yourself or they have the same names as the track you have written in your mixer down here. And the red highlighted areas you're here, you see here are potential collisions. So what this is really helpful for in an instance like this is doing some EQ work that affects one channel in one way and the other channel in another way, which enables the two to not clash as much. So for example, in the low mids here, I can pull this one down, push this one up. and eliminate some of those clashes. I'll be pretty extreme here.
I wouldn't really go that far if I'm really mixing. But what that can do in communicating those two instances of Pro-Q3 together is show me where my collisions are happening and give me some information to help me eliminate them through EQ, possibly. It could be compression. It could be something else. But um, seeing those collisions is really helpful, especially in similar parts like that. So there we are. There's some of the big differences between FabFilter's Pro-Q2 and Pro-Q3 and some of the new features in Pro-Q3. Highly recommend this plugin if you don't already have a digital EQ beyond your stock EQ, say, in your DAW, or if you have one you don't really like all the features of. This one having all the different filter shapes, having um, the dynamic EQ now added, which is huge, great for DSing and other, uh, other uh, areas. And if you don't have one that can do those things, this can do pretty much everything you would need in a digital EQ. When I say digital EQ, I mean it's not modeling any specific analog piece of gear. It's not trying to add saturation or coloration through emulating transformers or resistors or electronics. It's not doing that. This is a an EQ for for the the everyday EQ work you want to do, not for character, but for precision. And with the, all the options that it has, I can't recommend it enough. Fab Filters Pro Q3. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please leave any comments or questions in the video below. See you next time.